Hello there, and welcome to this video. Today we are going to be touching on two separate subjects. Today we're going to be talking about the idiocies of the ideas of people that want to leave a political union as a United Kingdom to go into another political union with the European Union but yet would call the people that actually started a nationalistic movement to separate from the European Union to stay into the UK's Union racist, bigoted and xenophobic. Yes, it is a case of do what I say, don't do what I do, but it's a case of you have to understand where these people's rationale are coming from. For me, the rationale that these people are trying to exude is trying to come to the point of trying to say that we are not racist, we are not anything that has to come of this. We do not want any part of this. We are running away from this. Even though there has been proven the fact that if Scotland themselves were to leave as independents, that the European Union would not welcome them with open arms. They would not put them to the front of the queue. They would not try to help them as best as they possibly could. In fact, they will leave them to their own devices. They would put them to the bottom of the queue as they would not have any idea on what the economic strength of Scotland would be. And to that point, most of Scotland don't know what their economical strength would be if they were to leave both Europe, because remember, if you were to leave the United Kingdom, even at this point, you'd be leaving Europe as well. So you'd lose all of their funding, and then you'd be leaving the United Kingdom as well. And in actual fact, the Scottish people that want independence are complete and utter separatists and they don't even realize it they are pushing for the fact that they want to have this separation from the uk but yet do not understand that if they separate from the uk they separate from europe and in actual fact they will be literally the only european country that will be on its own if it leaves the United Kingdom as it so wants to and wants to succession from it and be its own complete independent country, then it has to deal as such with its own economic standings. And as most people would have an understanding of it, the economic standings of most countries that are on their own are not particularly great when it comes to this. This is the reason why the United Kingdom, even though it left, wasn't a case of England leaving the European Union. It was a case of... United Kingdom leaving the European Union. Though, there is actually good news in this at this moment in time. We have a new Irish party that is now coming up for IEXIT, or Irish Brexit, so to speak. A European Union exit from the Republic of Ireland. Yes, that Republic of Ireland. Though there is not much chance of it actually gaining any sort of momentum at this point in time, it does go to show you the lengths that people are going to to realise they are being punished by the European Union and the tactics and underhandedness of the European Union and in some cases just the plain old heavy handedness of the European Union is coming to the point of people realising that maybe it's not as such a good idea to give foreign powers sovereignty over yourself as a country to let them dictate to you what you can and cannot do. Hence why you have so many countries like Italy, Hungary, Romania, Poland, that are all starting to rebel against the European Union, even from within, to the point of talks of their own forms of exit of the European Union, to the point of now you're having it even in Ireland. So now that I've laid the groundwork of the two stories that we're actually going to be talking about today, the idea of one turning into the idea of complete and utter separatists, as in the idea of being completely on their own and not even realising it, because one cannot leave the European Union without leaving the United Kingdom. I'm talking to you, Scotland. Because if you leave the United Kingdom, you automatically leave Europe. They have already said this to you before. Now, I have no problems in anybody wanting to have their own independence. Go for it. But actually understand what you are voting for for people that are trying to vote for independence. And understand that the people that are pushing for this independence are always pushing for the independence. 
and we use any political message they can and any political politicizing that they can to be able to push that message. One of those people being the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, who would gladly push at any opportunity the idea of being able to have an independence referendum. She has been after this since the start of her leadership. The only reason why she hasn't been able to produce that is the fact that everybody, when they heard about the referendum, was a once in a generational referendum, but has been pushing this second referendum for a long time. Does this sound familiar to anybody? You didn't vote the way that we wanted, so we're going to force you to keep on voting the way that we want you to vote until you get there? Seems to me that this is always the same thing, no matter what happens in leadership nowadays. If you don't vote the way that the majority of the leadership wants you to vote, then you have another vote to attest to. So let's actually get into the crooks of the actual stories and actually find out what's going on, shall we? suggests that Brexit could potentially jeopardize the future unity of the United Kingdom. The survey released on Sunday indicates that if Britain leaves the EU as planned in March 2019, 47% of Scots would be in favor of independence, with 43 against. The poll that I think is most interesting today is the one that shows that as people look at the prospect of a hard, perhaps no deal Brexit, then a majority of people in Scotland are actually saying they would choose the alternative of independence. Or as some people would have to say to you, First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, is that you keep on pushing for the independence that you are starting to brainwash people into thinking that if they were able to leave the United Kingdom, then they would automatically be accepted into the EU, or the fact is that they won't even leave the EU. The actual point is that on countless occasion, which is only a Google search away, which is why I'm not going to link it, the European Union has said to you that you will not be part of the European Union if you have your independence from the United Kingdom. You will be put to the bottom of the queue. These are points that are never mentioned. It is all of a point of morality and the reactionary group that you portray to try and say to people that they need to leave because England is racist, xenophobic and is leaving the European Union and they're doing it without the consent of the Scottish people. When in actual fact, the reason why we had the United Kingdom referendum on the actual point of leaving the European Union was to include you and you were included. We were not included in your referendum on your independence, even though you were successioning from the United Kingdom at that point in time. But nobody complained about it because it was up to you to decide whether or not you wanted to be independent. The same thing as in a democracy, when it comes to the point of having a referendum to decide whether or not you actually leave the European Union or not, it's a case it's down to the political unions that have been strived over the nationalities that we have. Surprisingly, we left the European Union, or we will hopefully do in the next couple of years. But this is my point that I keep on coming back to. The fact that Nicola Sturgeon is now producing the idea of a second referendum to go on to the point of independence, even though when Mr. Rapist Salmond, I mean alleged rapist Mr. Salmon, was able to say to everybody that it was once in a generational point of this independence referendum, and yet people were still pushing for it so that they can get their own ideas. Where have we seen this before in the whole of Europe? No one would ever guess that it took two times for Ireland, Republic of Ireland, remember, to actually stay in the European Union. Nobody would remember that, would they, after the Lisbon Treaty? But keep on voting and eventually we'll get the right result. It's like trying to play a football match and every time that you lose one or two nil, then eventually you get that one goal and you win one nil and you want the match to end at that point. It's like being a petulant child that wants its own way, rather than the actual proper idea of democracy of letting the majority rule. Now with that, let's carry on. News of the surge in support for independence should there be a second referendum comes after a period of stability which saw support for Scottish secession hover around 44%. In 2014, a referendum on the issue was held 
with 55% voting against. If it's a no vote by a whisker, again, is that it? Do you come back for another referendum in a few years' time? I mean, you've talked in the past about it being for a generation. Is that still your view? Yes, it is. Would there be another referendum in our lifetimes or our, you know, we've always said it's a once in a generation? The SNP have always uh, said that in our view these kind of referendums are once in a generation events. Once in a generation opportunity. Once in a generation opportunity. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Take this once in a generation, once in a lifetime opportunity. Once in a lifetime opportunity. The once in a generation thing. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Right. <laughs> These kind of referendums are once in a generation events. Politicians have to respect the democratic wishes of, of Scotland. Calls for another referendum began after the UK chose to leave the EU in 2016. Scotland is strongly pro-EU and an overwhelming 62% of Scots voted against Brexit. The SNP's Europe spokesman Stefan Gethins welcomed the survey and claimed that support for independence was now polling at historic highs. This comes at a time when UK Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit strategy is drawing criticism from all sides. And Let's be honest here, the reason why that everybody is so against the Chequers deal is because it gives all the powers to the EU but gives none of the benefits that anybody wants. For instance, for people that are Remainers, it gives all of the power to the EU, but does not give any of the benefits, i.e. being able to have free trade, free movement, free anything, surprisingly, not for the left. And for Brexiteers themselves, it's the process of giving the European Union all the rights and dictating what they can and cannot do with us in general and what trade deals we can and cannot make, because we have to stick to the European rule book is still the case of that means that we're completely and utterly in control by the EU, but yet we see none of the benefits that you could attest to from staying in the EU. It is as bad as a deal as cutting your own hand off to get another hand. It is that bad and that pointless. But let's get back on with the show. In fear of a no deal Brexit is growing. The British government, however, has said that the question of Scotland's future was settled in 2014, with voters not wishing to revisit it. James Dornan from the Scottish National Party thinks the discontent over Westminster's politics could grow. The people of Scotland voted to remain, and we have to always remember that at the forefront of our mind, the people of Scotland voted to remain in the European Union. And I think that the way that our views have been discarded by Westminster. Now listen here, they're not being disregarded by Westminster. In actual fact, if you wanted to be completely and brutally honest, Westminster are actually disregarding the will of over 17.8 million people at this moment in time by doing this strange, weird deal that benefits absolutely nobody apart from the EU. I wonder how they come up with that plan. But for somebody to sit there and say that it's Westminster's fault that democracy decided that we were going to leave the European Union, remembering that you were having a referendum in 2014 yourselves to decide whether or not you wanted to stay politically and nationalistically aligned in the United Kingdom. And surprisingly enough, Scotland voted to stay in the United Kingdom, which means that when the United Kingdom makes a decision, guess fucking what? That means Scotland, which is a part of the United fucking Kingdom, has to do what the United Kingdom has voted for. That is the state of democracy. Remember, you tried to leave the political union, but yet you failed. Now, do not say that the political union of the United Kingdom is now completely and utterly disrespecting you, when it has to actually respect the will of the majority of the people. Pick up any democracy book. And that is what it will say, that it has to deal with the majority of the concerns of the civilization it is representing, not the minority, and not yourself. Now, if you were to have voted to leave and would not have been part of the United Kingdom, guess what? You would have not been in the European Union anyway. So let's get back to the video.
the arrogance that's coming out of the Westminster government and, and the ministers is, is quite shocking. And I think the people of Scotland are seeing that it's not just about Europe, it's the fact that Scotland's voice is not being heard on issues of crucial importance. The more that people realise that those that have driven us here have driven us through a mix of self-interest and a, a, a xenophobia that is frightening from senior politicians and their supporters, uh, then I think that the people of Scotland will quite clearly see those figures of 47% grow to over 50%, and that's not including the don't knows, who I would expect to start to come to us as well. The absolute arrogance of Westminster, apparently. But yet, yeah, let's have a look at what he's actually saying. That under a political union, countries can be drawn into stuff that they don't want to do, and countries that actually vote to get their own sovereignty back are the xenophobic and nationalistic and racist countries. So, using that logic, Scotland, what is it that you want to vote for again? That's right, independence. Because you're not being able to do what you want to do and you're not able to trade in the way that you want to trade or vote in the way that you want to vote. Interesting how the parallels are so similar and yet two separate lots of people will come up with completely different answers for what the answer is. Amazing that, isn't it? So now that we have drawn parallels from the ideas of being separate but yet the same and wanting the same things but yet going to a different conclusion on how to get them is... um absolutely amazing on that standpoint by the way that all these nationalistic people that are throwing their flags around in accordance with catalonia as well or catalonia depending on your pronunciation of the independence that they so choose to want as well and yet you so choose to want the independence from our political union but don't see that the parallels between the eu's political and economic unions that force you to do so much more by their rules than what the United Kingdom would tell you to do by your own rules as you are governed by yourselves. You are taxing at your own rate. You are living by yourselves and technically are as independent as a country can be in a political union. But yet, let's vote to leave the political union of the United Kingdom, leave Europe and reapply to become part of the European Union, as a political union, mind you. This is the logic that you have to deal with. This is the logic that is now being perpetuated. We want to vote to leave the racist countries of the England and Irish and, and whatever, the political union of the United Kingdom. We want to leave these racist countries because they won't let us do what we want to do. So we're going to leave them and we're going to vote to become part of the European Union. All right, why did you vote to leave um, the European Union again, the United Kingdom? That's right, to gain sovereignty, to be able to do what you wanted to do. The parallels in this ideas and these points that are being made are absolutely ridiculously similar, that it's almost laughable that people have come up with completely different conclusions of what the answers should or could well be. The point is that one person or groups of people want to have a nation that is run by its own nation where one wants to separate from a political union just to join another political union because it's under the belief that one would either get more money from that political union or in this instance and under this ideology of being able to get more rights for the fact of being in that political union. Slight point of contention here though is that if countries are seen not to be doing the European Union's bidding then they get sanctioned to high heaven and fined and threatened. But you know, freedom is the European Union apparently. Democracy lives on. And yet nobody can understand that the reasons why they're leaving is because they want to be in control of their own nation and should, if they wanted to, to follow their logical conclusion, not actually be part of any political union and run by themselves. And I think that's where the purpose of this is going. We want to leave one political union that we deem as racist and undemocratic to join another political union we deem as perfect and virtually superior compared to the one that we're already in. And to me, that makes no sense whatsoever. No sense whatsoever. You have a look at the pictures that are coming through with all of these nationalistic 
flags that want their independence to be an independent Scotland. I bet if you were to ask most of these independents and people that are supposed to be leavers, so to speak, of the United Kingdom, whether they wanted to be part of the European Union as well, I bet you most of them would say no. And if they do say yes, why would you leave the political union of the United Kingdom? Because you want to have your own sovereignty? You don't get that in the European Union, my friends. You really don't. That's the reason why people voted to leave in the first place. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the Irish that are now turning into Eurosceptics and then launching a new political party bidding to take country out of the EU. I exit freedom is set to launch this weekend on a platform of the Republic of Ireland leaving the EU. So that's very interesting, isn't it? How one set of country can have the idea of gaining its own independence and own ideas, but that means leaving the political union of the United Kingdom to gain that independence. And then another part of a country in the United Kingdom or Great Britain, technically, that would actually be ready to leave the European Union. Now, that doesn't mean that this is going to gain any traction, but it's still to the point of contention of saying how different people that want their national freedoms are actually going about it in completely and utterly different ways. Now let's get into this story a little bit deeper and find out what's actually going on with it and the maybe the idea of actual more political freedom in the idea of the destruction of the EU politically. So, a new political party has been launched in Ireland which aims to take the country out of the EU in wake of Brexit. So, I Exit Freedom is campaigning on the platform of quitting Europe and maintaining close ties with the UK, presumably on the idea of being able to have closed borders, not worrying too much about then the Good Friday Agreement because we'll both be in the same borders and we'll be borderless. So, it makes a lot of sense in a practical sense as well. And yes, I actually feel that this is a good thing overall for Britain and for Brexit. I also think that this is a good idea for bringing everybody that is part of Great Britain back into the political union of the United Kingdom. I think that will work a hell of a lot better for everybody. But obviously not everybody is going to be under the same sort of ideas on that one. So it's a case of they will need to have the actual referendum and whatever referendum result is needs to be respected, especially for the first time. And we should not, and nor should the EU, pitch for a second one, regardless of what the outcome is. The party will launch this weekend in a bid to build momentum behind the iExit movement. It is led by a university professor, an ex-ambassador and spokesman for the Nigel Farage's group in the European Parliament. The group insists that Ixit is the best way to cope with the potential problems of Brexit, such as the possibility of a hard border between Northern Ireland and the Republic, which is what I already alluded to beforehand. They say the UK and Ireland should form their own free trade and customs zones separate to the EU arrangements, which would completely and utterly dispel any sort of ideas or baggage that would come from the European Union of not being able to separate or differentiate our customs agreements or arrangements with the EU due to Republic of Ireland being heavily involved, obviously, with the European Union and using their terms and service. Looks like it is absolutely possible and would absolutely help the idea of Brexit and would actually help the idea of forming free trade and I'll put that in proper terms. Free trade with other people where you don't have to pay tariffs, where you don't have to pay the expenses of freedom of movement and stuff like that. So with that, I say well done, Ireland. They also argue that Ireland will lose its traditional neutral stance in military matters as a result of being in the European army. You mean the European army that everybody said that wasn't going to be a army and never existed this is a dangerous fantasy <coughs> the idea that there's going to be a european air force a european army it's it proposed. is simply not 
true. Oh, the, dear, prob dear, the problem dear. with people like Nigel Farage is they, 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 they swing at windmills. They see do? conspiracies everywhere. I wouldn't do? be surprised if Nigel Farage soon tells us that the moon landing was a do? fake, that Barack Obama isn't American, that Elvis isn't dead. <laughs> Jean-Claude Juncker, President of the European Commission, has said they are building a European army. And we've got a bit of a choice to make here. You know, we've been with NATO, we've been with that group of countries since the late 1940s. The EU clearly is now in a position to attempt to usurp it. Um, and I just wonder, Ed, would you sign us up to a European army? Because no. that is where no. EU defence is going. And I think it's important, no. I, think, I think it's important that we do not we do not. Well, but, but, but are we going to have a choice on this? No, I, I think it's no is the answer. So, uh, so, so, <laughs> so, so are you saying, so are you saying that if 27 countries push ahead and form a European army, that you as Prime Minister will keep us out of it? Yeah, there's not going to be a European army, but look, let me, let me explain. Well, but there is going to be a European no, no, army. No, there isn't. Let, let there is a point to this video. The whole point of this video is one, to prove that politicians are always going to lie and politicians are going to prove to the fact that they want to do what's best for themselves. Not every single politician, let's get that under wraps first of all, hashtag not all, but generally the majority of politicians are out for themselves. Some may want to help people. That's not what the issue is. That's not what I'm really trying to talk about. My point is that politicians will lie to defend ideology that they believe in. So if they believe that European Union is going to be this big thing that's going to help everybody and produce a superpower to give them massive amounts of security and massive amount of being able to have financial stability then they are going to lie and to defend it such as they have done in that instance that i've just shown you where it's a case of they will not even admit that they were and have a european army and at that point in time building a european army these are the things that people that are in scotland are voting to leave our tyrannical, racist, nationalistic, xenophobic government and political union to join a form of a superpower that is forming itself into a super state that is crumbling from within to the point you have countries which are now being dictated to on what they can and cannot do for their own democracies and are undermining their own democracies when it comes to a point of a different political party winning where they always try to suggest that it is a case of the populist movement has taken over or has cheated. Now, in this instance, back to Scotland, if you want your own independence and those are the reasons you are giving for you to leave the political union of the United Kingdom, then think about this for instance. When you leave the political union of the United Kingdom, you are also leaving the political union of the European Union. So when you push forward this antic and idea that you're going to have complete and utter independence, yes you are, but be prepared for the fact is that yes, you are perpetuating your own independence, even more so than what the United Kingdom and England are trying to push forward. You're trying to even separate yourselves even further by not even being part of the EU when you leave the United Kingdom. And you're doing all of this under the guise of trying to stay in or be part of the European Union. So you are leaving one political union to stay or be part of another political union. Does anybody else see the hypocrisies in that statement? We're leaving your political union because we can't do what we want to do. Okay, fine. You want your national sovereignty back. Fair enough. You can leave and have your political own standpoints and your own understanding of what's going on. Fair enough. Stand on your own two feet. No, we want to go back into the European Union. Really? So you want to leave so you have your own nationalistic identity, so you have your own nationalistic points so you can govern yourself so to speak but yet you want to then completely and utterly devolve yourself into the european union and then absolutely give up all of your nationality and your sovereignty to the european union if they so choose to even accept you which at this point is not a given either so this actual video is more dedicated to the scottish people and to actually to make you think, why are your peers, even though they said that the independence referendum that you were going to have from the United Kingdom was a once in a lifetime opportunity, once in a lifetime guarantee, 
and yet are pushing that same narrative to try and get what they wanted. Why are they politicizing these points to convince you that one country that wants its own nationalistic identity and sovereignty from the European Union is racist and is xenophobic, that has no idea what it is doing and is completely on its own and isolationist, and then in the same breath suggesting that Scotland should cut all ties to every single political unions that it has ever been in touch with, just so it has the opportunity to be able to become nationalistic itself, so it can then follow and be a part of the European Union if or when they were able to be reinstated. Which again, no guarantee as the European Union has constantly said that it was not going to do that. And if people are looking at this video thinking, well, how can you compare the two? Because one is saying that they want to be nationalistic and one is saying that they want their own sovereignty back and is leaving the European Union for it. And the other reason is the same exact reasoning and exact same reasons for leaving the political union of the United Kingdom. They are the one and the same thing. They just have a different outcome. They just have a different purpose, but yet are exactly the same thing. And I think the idea of national sovereignty and sovereignty of being able to have your own independent country and look after your country yourselves is growing. Even under the steam and the disguise of trying to join another political union to do so, it's still growing. The independence is still there. And I think that we should actually encourage people to be able to do that. Now, independence does not mean it's an isolationist country. It does not mean that it wants to be separated or separate from every other country or political unions that are out there. It means it wants to govern itself. It means it wants to be governed by itself. Not by laws, not by bureaucrats, not by people that are unelected by the country telling that country what they can and cannot do. And I think more and people are realising that. And even if you take the idea of Scotland and you put it into the idea of the political union of the United Kingdom and then wanting to leave it, why can't the Scottish people then extrapolate that idea and then formulate it into the same idea of why England and the United Kingdom as a whole eventually wanted to leave the European Union. It's the same thing. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Please like and share as much as possible. And if you have a couple of Scottish people that you know, send it directly to them and let them know that what they're actually voting for is to leave the EU, even though they are leaving the United Kingdom if they so choose to do so. Let them know what they're actually voting for. Let them know that they are being lied to. Let them know that they are being manipulated. They are being pawns in the idea of a political struggle of the elite that are trying to tell you what they want and what they need and how they want to get around it. These are the people that are wanting to leave a political union that guarantees them European citizenship at this moment in time to leave that union to have a option, a chance of maybe reapplying to become part of the European Union. There are so many if, buts and maybes in this ideology, but it is sheer ideology, points of self-interest that are driving this. So let them know what they are voting for. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I bid you farewell. I bid you adieu. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye for now.